13 feet, 8 feet, 3, 2, 1. Okay, welcome to Comic Book Pros, presented by the Lake Como Comic Art Festival, an interview show where we talk to some of the most interesting and creative comic artists working today. I'm your host, Scott Doonbeer, ready to take you on another ride through the colorful world of comic art. Comic Book Pros is sponsored by the Lake Como Comic Art Festival, and I want to tell you about what makes this thing so special. Join us May 17th to 19th for three days celebrating comic art against the stunning backdrop of Lake Como, Italy. Are you ready for an unforgettable experience? Whether you're a seasoned comic collector or just dipping your toes into the world of comic art, the Lake Como Comic Art Festival has something for everyone. Who says you shouldn't meet your heroes? At Como, you'll have the chance to meet some of the biggest names in the industry. Legendary artists, writers, creators, and with only a thousand attendees, you'll for sure have the opportunity to meet and interact with your favorites in real life. Don't miss out on this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to celebrate your love for comics in the picturesque setting of Lake Como. The Lake Como Comic Art Festival is happening May 17th to 19th, 2024, and tickets are limited, so reserve your slot today. You can find tickets and more at www.lccaf.com. That's www.lccaf.com. Don't miss out on this exclusive event. Today we're talking to the visual mind behind some of modern comics' richest tapestries, Juanio Guernito. You likely know him from the gritty cinematic pages of the unforgettable and critically acclaimed Black Sot. This series is as beautiful as it is inventive, and has won numerous, numerous awards, including at the prestigious Angoulême Festival, as well as some Eisner Awards. His artistic journey took some interesting turns, and I'm excited to discuss the path of his career. For instance, before Black Sod, Wanyo was a lead character animator on several Disney animated features, including Tarzan, Hercules, and Atlantis the Lost Empire. Most recently, he has helped create, and I'm terrible with my French, Les Indes Forbes, is that right? Les the, de <laughs> thank you. And we will learn today about what other stories he has in store for us. An unparalleled talent and boundless imagination. Welcome, one you. Thank you. So first, so I believe, yes, you are a native of Spain. Um, what was it like coming up as an artist? I mean, I believe you did some fanzine work. Is that right? Yes, a lot, a lot, actually. I always had my oldest memories. I am already drawing. I've been always drawing. My dad uh, made sure that I always had pencils and paper and blocks and anything I needed and uh, comics too. And uh, very, very early, I know that I, I wanted to do that for a living. Right. Very, there was very a, there's there's was a large fan community of artists who became professional artists like Carlos Pacheco, for instance. I don't know if you knew Carlos, but he was very, very well. Very well. He was one yeah. He he worked in with a lot of fan on a lot of fan scenes as well. And um We did at the time, yes. Uh, and actually in the south of Spain, the region of Andalusia, in that in that uh, region we used to have a a lot of uh, fun scenes everywhere in the, the main towns, the main cities. Uh, I, I went to Fine Arts School in Granada. Carlos was from Cadix, but he came to Granada to study biology. And we didn't meet at the time because he was a little older than me. But, but, uh, um, but we had uh, common friends in the fun scene, uh, fun scene world over yes. there. Now, I believe, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe you also did some work for Marvel at that time. Uh, it was at the same time that Pacheco, it wasn't really for Marvel, it was for the Spanish publishing of Panini? Marvel. Hmm? No, Panini? No, not at the time. At the time it was Planeta. Ah, right, of course, of course. So what were some of your earlier published works? Uh, actually that, uh, probably professionally, it was my first... Uh, uh, serious, I, I could say, or, or <laughs> semi-serious stuff published were some illustrations of uh, X-Men and Captain America and others, X-Factor at the time, if I remember, if I remember well, New Mutants. Right, right. 
uh, at the time, Ca Carlos had started to to do that, to do some uh, special illustration for the for the Spanish edition, and then Salva La Roca and myself came uh, right after, and we did that right. we did that for some time, and then I and then I finished my final school years, and I went to Madrid to work on animation, and and for a while I didn't. For a while, I didn't had any contact with the with the with the comics, but then I came back. Well, speaking of um, of comics, who were some of the who were some of the artists that you were inspired by growing up? Who were some of your influences as you were growing up? Obviously, they change over the course of a life. Yeah, in the the beginning, being when I was a child, I, I loved all the. All the the Disney comics, the, the the cartoons too. At the time, we didn't have video, so it was once in a while they would they would mm, uh, show a movie in the in, in the local cinema, and for me it was unbelievable. There was some uh, some uh, Disney programs in the in the TV. We had we had one channel at the time. And, when when I was small, it seems like a, like a centuries ago, and uh, <laughs> but all that Disney stuff always <clears throat> talked to me a lot. So mainly, and, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I, I mean, it was a, a lot of Disney, and then the Spanish and other European co um, comic books, mostly for 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 children. But um, but when I came, uh, one of my First, uh, great uh, graphic shocks as I uh, graphic slaps as, uh, as I like to 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 name it. It's, it was uh, Asterix, and uh, then and then I discovered Tintin, and then and and then some some of the French uh, more adult uh, creators like Mobius, and it went on. Right, right. Yeah, uh, growing up. <clears throat> Some of the first comics that I ever read were uh, were Hergé and Tintin. My mom used to read them to me. It was uh, when I was five years old. You know, it was great stuff. So um, your um, your work has a very cinematic style. So obviously, you're very influenced by animation. Are you also are you also influenced by live action um, films? You know, are there any like film noir or anything like that or Yes, film noir, but even any any type of films, I'm uh, very interested in in cinematography. I've uh, worked uh, a lot in storyboard, not for mostly for animation, all, almost everything. If I'm I'm not sure if I <laughs> if I had done some uh, some storyboarding for for live action, which not not for a main movie, maybe for a small thing. <laughs> But the storyboard actually is a you it's a it's a development of of the cinematic language. So so in a way it has bridges that connected to 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 sequential uh, storytelling. Sure, I'd like to talk a little bit about your animation career and how you got into it. You mentioned you went to Madrid and you started getting into animation, but then you also went to Paris. Is that correct? Yes. I worked three years in, in Madrid. I had a short training in the beginning because I didn't really know uh, anything precise about animation work. I, I knew what everyone actually thought uh, knowing uh, the, the fact that you had to do a lot of drawings and that you have to project them very very fast, and and then there always there, those were three years when when I worked with uh, Juan Diaz, the script writer uh, for Black Sad. Uh We became friends, and then and, and the rest of my life has been uh, totally influenced and linked to 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 this guy and, and our friendship. And uh, so I worked in several studios, and then I I, I was offered a, I was offered a, a, a job by Disney <coughs> Disney Studios in Paris. I came and I, and I spent ten years in the in the studio till it till it closed. Actually, actually it closed uh, about ten years after I I was hired. 
I was doing layout work in the beginning, but uh, but by the time we went to Hercules production, I asked for a training in animation, which I, which I was wanting and eager to do from the beginning. And uh, I was trained by Sergio Pablos, uh, Klaus, Klaus is the director, and other great animators, Glenn King too. And, uh, and I became a, a character animator for, for the rest of the years I spent uh, at the studio. And you were the lead can- character animator, weren't you, on no. a lot of projects? No, no? never, never okay. lead, uh, never a uh, lead character animation. I was always an animator in the, in, in the team, uh, for instance, of uh, Sabor in Tazang or Hades in, in, uh, in Hercules. Hades was especially fun. Right. Um, to, now, speaking of Hades, so are you drawn to villains in in a certain way? Or oh no, I, I love them. I love them. But it, are they more fun? Uh, they're they're a lot of fun. I I agree to that. Uh, as uh, as um, as public as <clears throat> audience, I I love always. I'm always very interested in the in the villain characters. But on animation, actually, either let me remember what I what I did also in uh, yeah, <laughs> I seem to have been specializing in bad guys <laughs> somehow because I animated a bit on Helga also also in for Atlantis and uh, okay, <laughs> seems like I'm um, specialized. So you you obviously love animation from a very young age. What was it like? going into a movie theater and seeing your work up on the screen like that? It's, um, I can say it's a very fulfilling, that the fulfilling feeling, it comes from the teamwork. The fact that you, it, it's more like at the, in the end of the movie, I remember my first feature, feature movie, or at least long movie, was um, uh, a goofy movie, which was a TV production, but the, but that when we had the screening, the the team had the screening uh, for the goofy movie in a in a cinema theater, and we went and we had a party afterwards. But when the credits appear at the at the end after seeing the movie, <laughs> everyone we were every everyone it was exhilarating. It was, it was amazing, an amazing moment because when when the when you're watching the movie in which you worked, every time uh, a scene, one of your scenes, either if it's a layout layout scene or, a, or an animation scene comes comes by, it just just zooms sure. <laughs> by. It goes by, it disappears as as soon as it it's uh, as it's there. It's not there anymore. It uh, it goes a like whoosh. It's so fast. <laughs> they pass through so fast, it, and it. It's a bit frustrating, and it's a bit um, uh, frustrating in the in the moment when you when you when you feel that oh my god I spent I spent two months on that thing and it was like three seconds on the screen and then gone forever ah but uh, it's not frustrating to to um, uh, it's frustrating in the moment and afterwards it uh, you're, you're proud to have to for to to have being a part of of the whole project so that leads me to a question so after 10 years as a successful animator yeah. that, yes. okay you then you then left animation and is and and you know obviously you had a love of comics before and you had worked with Juan Diaz as you said but was part of the reason you left a little bit because, or maybe I'm reaching here, a little bit because of what you just said, that it's just that flash and then it's gone. Whereas if you do a comic, it's there and you can open it up and see it any time you want. Yeah. Was, no. is, that a, is that a little part of it? Uh, a bit, probably. Probably the, the, satisfaction, the satisfaction for the ego that you have uh, working in comics, not the same. 
unless uh, well i mean unless you are uh, an animation star and you work so fast that you have a lot of uh, a lot of your work it's uh, it's uh, in the movie and and you see often your your work when you are one one single animator well there's some some split, like split seconds here here and there but but then yeah. again it's a it's a different job i mean it's a it's a craftsman it's a craftsmanship and i love the fact that animation especially traditional animation hand-drawn animation as uh, eric goldberg yeah. names it of course is a is a craftsmanship and it's it's beautiful in that sense and that teamwork it's uh, it's amazing and the fact that you learn only from the masters you don't learn in, in, in books, videos, or tutorials. You learn it working on it and learning from, from your masters and, yeah, and, your, and your, uh, your mentors. So you worked with Juan Diaz, and then you, the two of you have collaborated on you know, the beautiful series Black Sad. And can you tell us about how that began? You know, I mean, was it? the two of you talking about, oh, we love comics, we'd like to do a story and then come up with the idea. What did what, what was the process? Yeah, it was more or less like that. Actually, when we met, we, we, talk, uh, we, we, we became friends because, uh, be, well, because we were working together and, and, um, and there was a good, uh, good feeling, a good connection, but also because we love comics and, and, uh, he was uh, an artist too, but, but, mm, but I love the way he wrote the, the, the scripting for his, uh, his comics. And I say, ah, you should write a script for me. And, uh, yeah. Let's do something, something to get <laughs> time. But it was like, a we were, we were, he was in his, he was a teenager and I was in my, in my early twenties. So, uh, can you imagine? We, we, we didn't have any aspirations. Our aspiration was to, to work all month and to have our, our salary be, being paid and to, and to learn some sure. animation and maybe, maybe progr- progress in our career in animation. And, but then it became a, some, a ser- the, the project became more and more serious. And uh, actually he had drawn um, uh, a couple of short black and white black set stories uh, and I saw them and I was jealous because I thought the character <laughs> had such charisma the character wasn't the same I mean that the, the drawing was wasn't I hope I know he doesn't mind me telling that the, the drawing wasn't very good because he says that the drawing was horrible it, it, it was it was it, was, it was and it was it, he was very young he was a teenager actually and um or by by that time, maybe in his early twenties, and uh, but uh, but the, the the interest of the story, the charisma of the of the main character was was there. There was a lot of potential, and and I maybe it was my also probably pretentious, but I I was sure to be able to to give something to 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 bring sure. that, that project to. To, to to a higher ground somehow, and and to um, and to draw that in a in in an ambitious way, in a realistic way, and uh, well, it, I, I was already anticipating everything. I was going to 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 do with the with the character, and and so we we got on it. Well, let me ask you. <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me. Um, you and Juan Diaz have won so many awards for this book. Were you were you a bit surprised at the acclaim that it received so early on? I mean, it, it was really instantaneous, you almost. Know? And at least, at least from my <clears throat> from my perspective from afar, you know. I mean, you know, it's. Almost twenty five years now, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. and, uh, and and it, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no. It was uh, as as you said. It was immediate. Uh, the first uh, small mm, comic festival I I went to. It was the same day or the day after the 
the book was the book was released in in the right. bookstores to the bookstores, and uh, and the first day uh, the, the that festival had a surprise for me. They they knew already the book because uh, I don't know uh, I don't know there were an, an advanced copy. An they advanced had, copy. they had previous yes it's a uh, premier copies I don't know. And uh, and they had already a prize, <laughs> the prize of the future. They they called it, le prix de l'avenir. Very nice prize of the future. And I was oh my god, <laughs> like the first the first day there, I'm meeting with some of my favorite uh, authors and, uh, and <laughs> artists. I am having a prize. I am feeling such a warm welcome from the public. It was like, um, what is this? So. So it it right. helped me to anticipate what was going to be the the, the following week. It was it was crazy. The, um, it was sold out so fast that that Dargo had to reprinting like uh, in the couple of couple of weeks after the it, it release its first release. It uh, and then some other prices came and the reaction of the public, the, the bookstores. That's impressive. Yeah, that's that's very nice. But nothing could, nothing could made us think. We were dreaming about it, of course, but nothing could have sure. made us think that it would go so so high, so high. The the Eisners, I do this because they are over there. The Eisners, the Eisners, being at the Eisners and receiving. Two of those prizes in one night. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's something. It's something. Yeah, and <clears throat> and I can say that you know, truthfully, it's very well deserved. You know, the work that you guys do on this project is phenomenal. You know, it really is. Oh, thank you very um, much. Uh, in any case, I, sure. I, all, all this and the Harveys and the the Eisner's Angoulême prizes, I've always been overwhelmed with gratitude. Good. So I have a question. I'm just curious about something. It's a completely different book, but there are some obvious similarities. Was Mouse a li- Art Spiegelman's Mouse a little bit of an inspiration to you guys, or was there some connection there, or or am I totally off base here? Uh, no, not really. You you know uh, you can't after Mouse you can't pretend that you are uh, doing funny animals, if we call them that, funny animals style, right. without thinking of uh, somehow at some level uh, about about mouse. Mouse, it's so important and it and um, so breakthrough in, in the, the use of animal to represent humans, human categories, human types. It's uh, we we. Uh, it's not our main influence. I mean, it. Uh, the idea was no, no, no. The idea was to do a, a, a detective story mixed up with a fable, and in the fable, right. in the classic fables, you have already the the animals uh, representing uh, human features or human of course. human of course. personalities, human characters. Uh, Human types, in fact, and uh, but 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 then it's been actually I I consider um, uh, mouse probably the the only because I I hear I hear here here and there you hear people say oh this this comic book this book is so it it was necessary and I say no 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 there's no comic book is necessary uh, they are important. They are great. Right. They may be magnificent, but there's not. I mean, there's no comic book necessary except for one, and that is. And that is. And that is the one. That is Mouse. Well, well, for me, that's 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 very high praise. It's it's a you know he did a tremendous work. You know, a very long work. Um, so are you ever planning? You and Juan Diaz planning on revisiting the the world of Black Sad? Yes, of course. Um, so, what do you mean revisiting? Doing more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, it, uh, I mean, just uh, which one is the last one you you got? 
Oh God, I can't. My my. Uh, because we just we just released horrible. the seventh yeah. one. We released yeah. the sixth oh, wow. one. I, it's being released by Dark Horse recently. I, I'm up to five, I think. <laughs> okay, no, we have seven. There's seven now, and the seventh it's supposed to come this year. I think I think it was due oh, nice. this uh, summer. Oh, that's great. and that two the um, six and seven it's a it's a diptych say it's a it's a two part story and uh and it's worked very well here in europe nice. it's been it's been fantastic great happiness from a from an artist's point of view from my i mean i i, I enjoy i enjoy working i i get up in the morning and i'm <laughs> eager to go to work Really, wow. that's, what, what, what more can I say about uh, that's how, a, that's happy, a great how thing. passionate I am about the project? So we don't, and we don't count on on stopping. Of course, we we like to work on other things. Juan has his stuff, I have mine, but we always the the, the plan is as long as uh, God gives us force and uh, and the strength necessary and uh, <laughs> and our and we don't succumb to Alzheimer's or anything uh, to keep working and to keep producing Black Sat, uh, Black Sat books because it's, uh, it's our total blast. Oh, cool. Do you have any input into the stories? I mean, aside I, from the visuals. I, I, don't, I don't write, but, Juan, uh, but we, we come from uh, animation, both, both of us, and, uh, and it's uh, very natural for us to submit one's work to the other. Always in animation, you always have to submit your work to somebody, your supervisor, director, anyone in the in the hierarchy. Uh, we don't have a hierarchy between us, but but mm, but we always feel that uh, what what one does has to be validated by the by the other. So and and uh, if uh, and I I show him everything every little sketch I do he he sees it it's sent by by the time I send the photocopies or by or faxes in <laughs> the time in the early in the early in the no I mean in the mid mid nineties and now we of course we take pictures with a uh, with a smartphone and just send it right away sure. Or send uh, files of, of scanned work, and uh, but I submit all my all, every step of my work, and he submits also every step of his work to me, and he he needs uh, he likes to 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 hear my my opinion on every step uh, from the first draft, the first first. Uh, very very short draft, or where he can just go with a. A pitch actually in some ideas uh, and then he he writes something more um, with the describing with the, with the, with the sequences and uh, and the situations and, and and at that point he does a lot of research in order to write and articulate the the, the situations in the and, and the plot and at that point uh, sometimes I took uh, also I actually took the liberty of, of, of criticizing his work and he he always listens to me uh, there was with the, one of the books with one of the books uh, I like the story but it, somehow there was an echo of the of the preceding book the preceding issue issue there there was Something, something strange. Is, it looked like the same type of um, investigation. Some, somehow, I don't want to reveal. I don't want to be precise. And actually, he told sure. me, "Wow, well, Teresa, uh, his uh, his wife, Teresa told me the same thing. He, <laughs> he had the same impression. So, if, if you both guys saw it, that means that you are most likely right. So." He rewrote the whole thing, and it became a it became a much better story. And he always, when I when I allow myself to 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 ask him to change stuff, uh, he listens. He always listens, and and when he when after discussion we accept to 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 uh, we we agree to change, and and he uh, he accepts to to work work again on, on that and reshape it he in the end always he's happier he said like, it it was worth it it 
it sounds like a great collaboration where you can it is. be honest it with is. each other and, and tell each other things truthfully. That's the best kind of collaboration, I think. Mm, it is. But, it's totally um, can we talk about, um, uh, and again, I'm going to mangle the title, Les Indes Forbes. <laughs> if you could talk about that. Sorry for the no, no, no. pronunciation. No, no, no. It's, uh, the pronunciation doesn't doesn't matter. We don't have a title, but it, in, in in English, it will translate more or less uh, into a rogue story or a rogue tale. Uh, the the character uh, it's um, it's a character from classic uh, classic Spanish literature. 17th century, actually, time, same times, uh, uh, same time of uh, same period as the Quixote, Don Quixote, uh, and um, uh, and this is this is a character that's very well known in, in in Spain, but not 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 internationally, not not internationally, not not in other countries. Uh, though in Spain is one of the most important characters in, in Spanish literature, from one of the most important authors who lived with the, lived in the same time as uh, Cervantes, and uh, there was this uh, literary genre which is called the picaresca, picaresca, picaresca is the, the uh, uh, it's uh, adventure, it's always uh, adventures and and stories about when the main character is a, a rogue, a picaro. Picaro means rogue, and he's somebody from uh, from the lower lower social layers. I don't know how to, how to say that. He's sure, like sure. he's like a villain, a poor guy, uh, a character that has that has to go through a lot of uh, <coughs> adventures and. Uh, and uh, complications to just to survive, and his goal is usually to um, to climb in the social ladder, because he's on the really on the at the bottom of the of the society, and he and his aspiration is uh, is uh, to 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 improve his condition and uh, sometimes to 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 learn to 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 earn money and to be richer. And to and uh, but in the end, when he tells the story, because it's a first first person narration, uh, he actually it's it's only the uh, the, the um, uh, it's a, a bunch of um, it's just an addition of, of horrible situations and, and bad things that he do and and. and and stealing, uh, so he has no, to be. Right. A, he has to be a, a con artist, a, a robber, a thief, and he has to. And, and actually, he 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 does a, um, he does a, a recapitulation of his sins, if I if I may say like that 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 way. So he tells his sinful life. He tells the story of his sinful life, and he usually repent. So that's the, the, the literary <laughs> range. And the character was, uh, the, this character is, so the, the, the main character in a, in a book called La Vida del Buscón uh, by Francisco de Quevedo, the, 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 the author. And uh, Alain, the scriptwriter, and I had the, the, the idea after, it was also um, the, finding the idea for the, the book that we were going to do together was was also very very long when we, we we it took a, it took a while for us to found to find our perfect uh, the perfect idea the, and uh, but at the, in the end it was perfect actually because when when nice. we found it when 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 we to, uh, it came by uh, talking by uh, about the Don Quixote also because he would he would say oh uh, it would have been great to 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 tell a story of Don Quixote in the, in America in South America he travels to South America and he has adventures in South America say, okay but that wouldn't be possible because Don Quixote dies in the in the second part of the of the story so it would be taking a lot of liberty 
uh, a, a bit too much liberty and the, right. the author wouldn't have liked that. But there is this other character, uh, Pablos de Segovia. He's like, oh, I don't know that character. And I said, yes, it's a picaresque novel. And he told me, oh, I've, I've read many picaresque love novels, but I don't know that one. Okay. Uh, and actually the novel uh, ends with a character after uh, telling his his life till the, the present moment when he's about 30, 30, 30 35. He, um, he's being a thief, uh, he, well, thief, con artist, robber, criminal, um, and, uh, uh, and many other things, musicians, students, uh, many things. And, uh, and he says, well, I, I decided to go to, to go to, to America to, to to try to find a better fortune for me and, and to improve my life and I'll tell and I'll tell you my lord in the in the second part but the second when I remember finishing the book when I was younger because I love the book I've read it twice and uh, and and thinking whoa there's a second part no there wasn't a second part and then <laughs> and then when and wow that's frustrating and then when along uh, when we were talking about this idea and I say, Oh my God, could we go and follow the, the story, nice. the storyline of, of, of that character? And, and would I, <laughs> would I be able to, to have a script written by this guy who for me is one of the best uh, writers in, in French language and one of the best in the market of, of comics worldwide. So, and uh, well, the, the, the result is there three and a half years of work. And uh, very ambitious, and I'm hoping we can get it published in English someday. I, I look forward to reading it someday. It sounds wonderful. Um, I'd like to talk about the uh, Comic Art Festival at Lake Como. Yeah. So, um, uh, yes. Have you been to Lake Como before? Of course. I'm... Uh, uh, I'm there from the beginning. I I'm, I can say I'm part of the organization, but I was uh, nice going together with uh, with Steve Morgan from the beginning. I we went uh, when Steve went to Como uh, to prospect for for places and to visit. Um, ah, nice. We, nice. Visited the, we visited the Palazzo. Yes, we were we were looking for hotels, and I was with him. I'm looking forward to going. This will be my first. I it's my second time in Lake Como. I went there when I was 18, but this will be my mm -hmm. first time going to the festival, and I'm really looking forward to it. W what are you looking forward to doing uh, in in Lake Como during the show and uh, doing uh, anything else outside of the show? Oh, in Como, which is uh, the, the the great thing in Como is is hanging with uh with my American colleagues who come. To the festival with Frank Cho and all the other guys. I'm not sure. sure. I'm not sure about who is coming exactly this year. I think Frank is coming every day because he was also at the origin of the originally involved in the project. Sure. And um, and uh, looking forward to to hang again with uh, with Steve and his wife and uh, with all the other friends uh, to to meet the public and to have fun. <clears throat> The, the place it's uh, you well you've seen it but I mean if you were young if you, uh, it was uh, some time ago you you're gonna you're gonna enjoy it because well I hope I hope we will have a good weather when when the weather is is good even when the when the weather is bad it's still gorgeous but if the weather is there oh my god it's one of the most beautiful places in the world it's really a privilege to be there I I cannot wait to go back. Um, so is there, in closing, we should wrap this up now. Is, do you have anything else you'd like to, uh, maybe plug that you have that's coming in the future? Um, uh, I am, uh, I'm soon going, go, going to start. I'm preparing, a to, 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 to ramp up with, the, uh, the, the work on my my following book, which is another book with uh, with Alain Hall, the scriptwriter for for Les Andes Fourbes, 
but uh, but right now I'm doing illustrations and commission works like uh, posters and uh, yes, festival posters. I have a couple of them, some illustrations that that I was asked to do. And uh, and uh, uh, I don't know if, if yes, you know what I'm going to talk about this. I was <laughs> I was commissioned a short story by DC, and uh, and uh, it, it it's a Joker story for uh, for the project uh, Joker the World. Sounds great. Uh, yeah. And uh, as soon as I was uh, proposed, I said yes, because I thought I had an idea. As soon as I had an idea, and I decided to write it myself, because they were expecting uh, maybe to, for me to work with a, with a script writer. And, but I had an idea, which I thought I was, it was a great idea. So I wrote it. And uh, I accepted the, um, the job and I started working on it and I wrote it and right away I sent it. And it was somehow problematic, but we, we I finally, uh, because my, the story I wanted to tell was a little political and, and I don't like to, to say subversive it's not a matter of subversion it's a matter of yeah, controversy i don't know i don't know but well it was an idea it was a little risky but i sent the, the script and after some some talking that the script was was approved so i started drawing it and two months later they told me to stop because they wouldn't they wouldn't publish it so I have this thing. This is the thing I'm. I'm I was working on in the, uh, at this moment. That 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 story is right there. I, 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 it's very rec- it's very recent. It was like a couple of weeks ago that that I had the the negative, and I was very very disappointed because uh, because the script had been approved. So I say, well, when I send the, the, the drone version, they say, no, 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 this is going to be problematic. I said, it was everything was described exactly that way in the script. What the heck is that? So I'm very frustrated. But it was even more frustra- frustrating not to draw it. So I'm drawing it. And I'm drawing it for me. And, uh, and that's it. And nobody will see it. Well, Thank maybe, you. maybe you can sh- maybe you can share it with me when we when you are done with it. <laughs> and if not, I understand it's it's for, disappointing. For your, I'm, for I'm your sorry. Eyes only in that case. <laughs> yeah, I know for for my eyes only, of course. <laughs> okay, well, well, thank you very much for joining us. It's been a pleasure thank talking you guys. to you and getting to know you a little bit. And I look forward to meeting you in person in Lake Como. Absolutely. Thank you, Scott. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Thank you, guys. And another episode of Comic Book Pros comes to a close. And a huge thank you to Juanio Granito for sharing his insights and creativity with us today. Remember, you can find more of Juanio's amazing work at Juanio Granito or join us at the Lake Como Comic Art Festival to meet him in person. I'm Scott Dunbeer, and as always, it's been an absolute pleasure guiding you through the wonderful world of comic art. Comic Book Pros is produced by Rami Atasi and Remzi Atasi. The show is edited and mixed by Mason Vendetti. Don't forget to subscribe and watch every interview on YouTube at Comic Book Pros or listen to the podcast on your favorite platform. Follow us on Instagram and X at Comic Book Pros for updates on future episodes. Until next time, keep dreaming, creating, and exploring the fascinating world of comic art. Goodbye for now.